you would bow your heads with me. Dear God, we come to you now at the appointed time, and we ask that you just speak directly to us, dear Lord. And we know that there's a lot of, a lot of noise in the world, and we just ask that you just kind of clear the mechanism for us so that we can concentrate on the word you have planned for us this morning, and that we hear it, and we hear it in truth. In Christ's name we pray, amen. So 2022, that doesn't sound like a real year, does it? Sounds like something in a science fiction movie, but... We're here, 2022, and we are turning the page on a new calendar, and uh, 2021, I don't know what your uh, personal experiences were. Um, strangely enough, I started the year out, I did a wedding on January the 1st of 2021, and then I did a wedding on January or December the 31st of 2021, so I started the year with a wedding, and I ended the year with a wedding. And so, got to celebrate love at the beginning, at the end. Now, I don't know if we celebrated love all through the middle of that, but um, had the opportunity to do that. And I was thinking, um, as I was preparing this sermon, um, one of the things that, that we stress when we talk to couples getting married, and um, something that um, we kind of stress as we do our weekly teachings here, is that... Um, Emotions, um, you, you can't rely on them. And um, emotion, emotions lie to you. And uh, emotions are, they're false leaders. And they can, um, they can drag you into places that you really don't need to be. And we talk about how um, love, something, one of the emotions that, dealing with weddings and stuff, but love is, is a choice. And we, uh, we draw that because um, marriage is built in the image of God, who's three in one. So marriage should resemble that. You know, it sh should have a husband, a wife, and God, so it should be three in one. Then also within that, it should be built on the love of God, which is a, he demonstrated, he chose to love us even when we were covered in our sins. He still sent Jesus Christ to die for us. Okay, he demonstrated his love. So the idea there is that you choose all right, but then it can't just stop at the choice. It has to be, um, you know, there has to be action. So um, a lot of times, um, anybody ever taken a, a picture of your meal and posted it on Facebook? Yeah, we all do that, right? Okay, absolutely. And, um, you know, we just naturally assume when you post those pictures on there, you went ahead and ate it, right? You just didn't enjoy the sight of it. So... I mean, there's, that's, that's an assumption, but it's a safe assumption. All right, so the thing I want to start out with this morning is just, just so that we're all in the same starting space is that um, there has to be a choice in Christianity, and then it can't just stop at the choice. There has to be evidence of, your, of that choice. So in marriage, we choose to love. Well, you just don't just get up and say, I, okay, I choose to love you. Because if anyone's been married longer than like 10 minutes, you know that sometimes that's not an easy choice some days, right? So you choose to love, but there needs to be evidence of that choice. So there should be forgiveness. There should be compassion. You know, there should be all this evidence um, from that choice. Because there's evidence of God's choosing to love us, I mean, he sent his son to die for us. And from that, we get salvation, we get eternal life, we get atonement, okay? So there's evidence of the choice. And I'm, I'm building up to something here, so don't just, I mean, you'll tune me out if you want to or not, but don't tune me out yet, all right? So thinking about this, I was studying in, in my private time, I, I've been studying John, the book of John. And if, you've, if you haven't read the book of John before, I highly encourage you to do it. If you haven't read it in a while, I highly encourage you to get back on it. It is just an, just an amazing book. Um, I'm in the sixth chapter here this morning, and it's a long chapter. Okay, There's like 72 verses in it. It's a, it's a long chapter. So I'm going to give you some background for the verses that we're going to concentrate on this morning. Okay, So, you know, he's fed the 5,000, okay, and then... He's got out on the boat and walked on the water. So all that has happened. And then um, the, the crowd that he fed 
wakes up and they find out that Jesus has gone. So they follow Jesus. They follow him to Capernaum. And then um, they're, they're asking for, you know, like, hey, we're hungry, you know. And, and he, he says, you know, you're following me because I fed you. And they start talking about having this discussion about Moses fed him. And he had manna from heaven that came down. And they, they bring up the immortal name to them of, of Moses. And then in verse 27, Jesus tells them, do not labor for the food which perishes. So he's trying to redirect them. He's trying to direct them from materialism to now speaking in spiritual senses and in a spiritual um, mode here. So he's trying to redirect them because they're concentrating on what they're getting now. Okay, and I call that the Janet Jackson syndrome. What have you done for me lately? That's a famous song that she had if you're not into the late 80s hip hop, okay? But she had a famous song, What Have You Done For Me Lately? And that's kind of how, and I can't say it without that phrasing, What Have You Done For Me Lately? Do, 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 do. All right, so anyways, okay, so, but that is, that is human nature. I mean, that's, that's where we are as humans, is, you know, you can do something for somebody and it's life-changing, but you know, 10 minutes later, they want more. And, and in our, our teaching in marriages, what we, you know, what we talk about is uh, something that we explicitly explain to husbands is that husbands think that they can rack up these points, all right? Wives don't, wives don't do that. Because think about it, wives do housework, they do the laundry, they do the dishes, they do the, ki- the cooking and, and the cleaning and all that stuff. And we just, and we as men just like, yeah, well, that's, you know, that's woman's work. I'm just kidding, all right? <laughs> kind of, no, I'm just kidding, all right? But when we do something like that, we want, you know, we want like, hey, do you, don't you remember two weeks ago I did, the, I, I did the laundry, I did that load of laundry. And it's like, yeah. Well, they don't, they don't do that, okay? So human nature is all about what have you done for me? Real, what can you do for me now, all right? And so that's what they're asking. And, and he's trying to redirect them. He's trying to get them into a, a spiritual, eternal mindset. And he says, you know, don't, don't just concentrate on the stuff that you can get now, okay? Because what, that, what he's saying there is, and, and this is a mindset that some of us have to win and win now. We always have to win. And then there are some who have a long-term vision, and they can see where they need to be down the road. And sometimes they're capable of losing small little battles to get to where they need to in the war. But if you're someone who always has to win, then that's a tough road to travel because that's going to be a very, you know, very aggressive road that you have to travel. And so he's saying, but the food which endures to everlasting life. So see, he's pushing them to a spiritual mindset. And we kind of need to get there too because we're kind of caught in this world, and I'm not just preaching to the choir here, but in in the world's mindset, we concentrate on the here and now and the materialistic things and what can I get and are you trying to take it from me? And that's kind of where we are now, and that's the battles that we're having. Okay, and uh, you know, you didn't earn it, and you got a bunch of it, and I don't have any of it, and it, so there's all from both sides. Okay, so I'm throwing it out there on both sides, and it says, Which the Son of Man will give you. Okay, so he's expressing, Let's get away from this materialistic earthly stuff because I'm trying to redirect you into the long game here, and it only comes from me because God the Father has set his seal on him. Okay. And then it's, he explains that the manna didn't actually come from Moses, it came from God. And sometimes we forget that. And sometimes we get our vision clouded, and it's not so clear for us to see that all blessings flow through Jesus Christ from God, right? I mean, we get, we, our vision gets so tainted and so cloudy that we can't see the truth. And we forget that all blessings come from God. And sometimes we kind of put the credit on ourselves, like, did you see what I did? Okay, have you seen what I earned? Have you seen what I can do? And the, the mindset should be that all blessings come from God. And that's where he's redirecting them, all right? And then here is a great statement. Lord, give us this bread always. And, you know, and it sounds like, and listen, it sounds like they're really 
you know, they're really praising Jesus, like, give us this bread always. But sometimes our worshiping can be so selfish, like, give me bread all the time. You know, I want blessings, I want blessings. And, and we somehow have been sold that Christianity is filled with blessings. And, it, you know, once you get in here, it's just going to be blessing after blessing after blessing. But I'm here to tell you that the Bible sets you up and prepares you in Christianity to know that there's going to be trials and tribulations coming always. And out of those trials and tribulations come blessings if you handle them the way that the Bible directs you to. Okay? So we've been sold the wrong kind of Christianity sometimes. And it's our job to redirect ourselves back to a more genuine, real Christianity. And that is one that is prepared for the storms and knows where to give credit for the victories and where to lean on for strength, and that is nothing to do with us. And that's tough to say is that our trials have nothing to do with us because sometimes we're the ones enduring them. But yet, if you do it the right way, then you can come away with the right kind of mission, the right kind of motive, and you can remain in God's will, all right? So there's this statement, give us this spread always. And Jesus says to them, and he's, again, redirecting them, okay? Because they're pleading for bread now. And they want breakfast. They were the you know brunch. They want brunch. They're hungry, and they say, "Give us this bread and give you know." I know you fed us the other day, and it was an amazing miracle. But what can you do for us now? And he says, "I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst." And he is redirecting them into a spiritual mindset that, "Hey, I am the answer to all of your problems." Okay, and. Not in the materialistic way, not in the earthly way only, but also in the spiritual realm, in the everlasting thinking. And he says, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. So there he is, projecting that he is the Savior. He's going to the cross. He's going to die. His blood will be spilt. His flesh will be pierced for us. He will die for us. And it says the Jews therefore quarreled. So we got the religious leaders coming in. And they start to quarrel. And they start to get the people roused up. Okay? And they start to get all these emotions involved. And it says, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? So they take it and they bring it back into the materialistic thinking. And they bring it back into the emotional realm. And they rely on emotions. They rely on misinformation. Does that sound, I mean, that's our world, right, right now. And you can't exclude either side, or the middle, or the circumference, or whatever. It's all craziness here, okay? And that is where they bring them back into, and then Jesus says to them, and he hammers it down, he doubles down, and he puts this out here, most assuredly I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. And that goes against all kinds of Jewish law, okay? You can't touch blood, you'd be unclean. There's all kinds of stuff wrapped up in here, all right? So that is where they are. He's laying it down. I am the Savior. There's no other way to get to eternal life. There's no other way to live except through me. And you have to accept me. You have to accept me, and you have to do it, or else you are dead, dead in your trespasses. You're already dead and you're doomed to an eternity in hell, okay? So that is, that is the underlying things that are going on there. We have these people that, that have been following him, they have received blessings from him, and yet they're crying out for more, but there's this, arg there, there's this statement that's being made here, that you have to be all in, just like the widow and her, her might. You have to be all in, all right? And then we get to the verses, all right? So we're picking up in the verse 60. And it says, and I want you to read that caption there. Does this offend you? All right? Because we are um, offended a lot as people. And um, sometimes when, and here's the thing that, you know, we're masters of. Sometimes when, when we're in the wrong, we turn it around and pretend like we're the ones offended. Okay? And we make ourselves the victim. So it says, therefore, many of his disciples, okay, so we're talking about the periphery here as well. When they heard this, they said, all right, this is a hard saying, and who can understand it? So here's what they're being, what's being said. 
They're saying that this, this is a very complex statement, and there's a lot of theology flown in there, and there's a lot of, a lot of doctrine, and there's a lot of this. And, um, you know, and he's, he's making these statements, and they're very bold statements, and he's doubling down on them. And we're kind of confused. Now we got the religious leaders chiming in, and we're kind of confused. And, you know, I don't really understand. So, but here, here's, here's the thing. A lot of times, a lot of times there are things that we don't understand. There are some things that, you know, that just kind of baffle my mind, like the Holy Trinity. I have to break that down to be very basic for me to get an understanding of what's going on there. The, the birth, the, the virgin birth of Jesus Christ, okay? The, the word becomes flesh. I, I, when, you, when you boil that down, there's a lot going on there. I don't know if my mind can absorb it all and, and, and can compute it all, okay? There's a lot going on there. So there's a lot going on in some places, and yeah, it can be, it can be difficult to understand. But let's just, let's just really just be honest with ourselves this morning, okay? So, so let me get your attention real quick. A lot of times what, the things that we struggle with are the things that we understand crystal clear. You understand what I'm saying? There are things that we understand in the Bible. We know what's being asked of us. We know what our job is. That, that is where we have our troubles. That is where we have trouble picking up our cross because we know what's on that cross. We know the weight of that cross. We know what's being asked of us. And it says there that Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this. So he says, does this offend you? And let me ask you this this morning. Be honest with yourself. You know the Bible. You know the things that God stands for. You know what Christianity is. You know the example of Jesus Christ. Are you capable of going out and living that? Or has that become offensive to you? Ask yourself that. I've been struggling with this for several weeks. Do I really show the examples of Jesus Christ? Do I, does, is there evidence of my choice? And it says, he says to them, what then if you should see the Son of Man ascend from where he was before? What would you do then? Okay, and it says, it is the Spirit who gives life, the flesh profits nothing. So now he's, again, redirecting them into a spirit spiritual mindset, all right? The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life, but there are some of you who do not believe. And that's where some of us are. We understand, we know what it's saying, and some of us have even made the choice. But all we've really done to put it into some modern day language is you and me have taken the picture of your food and now you've posted it on Facebook or Instagram or Snapchat or whatever, whatever meta, it's, I guess it's meta now, right? I don't know. Anyways, we've posted it. Now people can't even make the assumption that we went ahead and ate it. But some of us there's no evidence of our choice. And I'm speaking to myself here. I preach to myself each and every week. You just get to watch it, all right? Because it's tough. And let me, let me redirect you and me that we don't preach humanism here. So I'm not asking you to be a better, put your name in there. I'm not asking to be a better Aaron. I'm asking to be an Aaron filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay, that's the only way Aaron makes it in this world. Otherwise, I'm back to, we, we, we have a joke that sometimes 1995 Aaron wants to come out. And he's not, a, he's not a good guy. He's filled with rage and anger and all kinds of emotions. Okay, he didn't make good decisions, that dude. All right, I'm glad I don't know him anymore. But he, he comes around sometimes and he, he wants to hang out. 
<laughs> and I have to be honest with you, you know, sometimes I want to hang out with him, <laughs> okay? But we can't do that, all right? So ask yourself that. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were who did not believe. And there's a, in, in, you know, he is God, so he's got all knowledge. Here's the, here's the thing. He still loves you. He still loves me. Even when he knows I'm going to fail, he still loves us. And aren't you glad he's that kind of God? And it says, and who would betray him. And he said, therefore, I have said to you that no one can come to me unless it has been granted to him by my father. And from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked with him. No more. So there's a decision that is made. It's either an active decision or it's a passive decision. But either way, it's a, de it's a decision. Just like each and every day when we get up, we have to choose if we're going to love if we're going to love our kids, if we're going to love our spouses, if we're going to love the friends and the, and the co-workers in our life, we have to make that choice. Okay? We also have to choose whether or not we're going to forgive. And there's an old saying that you have to forgive and forget. Sometimes the forgiving is easy. The forgetting is impossible. And the forgetting sometimes bleeds back into the forgiving, not being given. So we have these struggles that we go through. And sometimes, you know, we have, to, we have to turn the other cheek. We have to do the things that are hard to do. We have to serve people that don't reflect us exactly, that we have disagreements with. We have to serve them and serve them in love. We have to do the things that Jesus Christ asks us to do. Pick up that cross each and every day. So ask yourself this question. As we roll into a new year, okay, we have opportunities to serve. And I don't, I don't know what, I, 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 the last, I'll just be honest with you, the last biology class I had was in the 80s. Okay, so I don't know about all the science or, or what's going on out here. I'm just like you, okay, I have to take in the information and make my decisions that I think are best for me and my family. I'm just like you, okay? I don't know what the future holds. I don't have a crystal ball. I do know who holds tomorrow, like the song says. That's where you have to put your faith in. We don't know what our opportunities are going to look like. We don't know what our ministries are going to look like. But here's the thing that we have to do, is we have to stand firm to say that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, who came down and died for each and every one of us. And he was resurrected on the third day, and then 150 solo days after that, he ascended, in, excuse me, <coughs> ascended into heaven, where he now sits at the right hand of the Father. And he has made a promise to us that he has created a, a mansion in heaven for each and every one of us, and he will come back and take us to be with him forever. And that's what we have to stand on. And it's our mission to go out and spread that in love, in service, in stewardship, through sacrifice. Okay? That is the revolution of love. That is the revolution of Jesus Christ. But it can't be an army filled with people who have no evidence of their choice. We have to have evidence of our choice. That's the whole James, book of James argument there. Okay? Is it works or is it faith? Well... If you have faith, you'll have works, and you know if you do works, you do it because of your faith. Same thing here. 2022 can be what we make of it, but we have to make the choice, and then we have to make evident and have that evidence of our choice, and it has to be the same thing inside each and every one of us in our personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Because we don't want to be one of the disciples who no longer walk with him. And have you read the story about the rich young ruler? You know how it ends? It does not end with Jesus chasing him down and say, did you not hear what I said? Come on, man. It doesn't end like that. 
It's a choice. It's a celebration of our love for Jesus Christ because he loved us first. And no greater love has ever been shown except for him to lay down his life for the world. I'm going to ask you to stand this morning. This ends with the question, Lord, to whom shall we go if we leave? There's the answer. You either walk with him or we're orphans. So we come to the altar, or you can stay where you are this morning, but we, we, we need to be a church of prayer. We are a church of prayer, but we need to always increase in the push our prayers, the Bible calls us to lift up one another's burdens as if they are our own. We're called to serve one another. We're called to pray for one another. So I'm just going to ask you this morning to pray for the opportunities of 2022. Pray that we meet our obligations to serve, that we become the church, the families, and the individuals that God has created us to be. And then pray for our nation, our world, our leaders on both sides. We have to be, and, and I ask you this all the time, if the Christians aren't praying, then who is? So 2022 can be a year of opportunities, a year where we spread the love of Jesus Christ. But we have to choose it and we have to put it into action. Thank you for tuning into Star Church's sermon. We truly hope that the sermon edified you today and brought you closer to the Lord. For more information about Star Church, visit our website at stargbchurch.com. Once again, that's stargbchurch.com. If you would like to visit our church, our address is 4925 State Road 142 North, El Dorado, Illinois 62930. We now pray that God will bless you as you enter the mission field and bring his word to the world. And as always, we will see you next time here at Star Church.